Thanks for joining us. My name is Dr. William Porter McRoberts. I'm here with Dr. Paul Wu, my partner. We're both interventional physiatrists in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today we're going to talk about anatomy, specifically of the cervical spine. I've got Dr. Wu with me. He's an expert on cervical spinal anatomy, specifically how it relates to function as well as pain. And so we're going to try and build out the nuances for you and explain in, in terms that everyone can understand how, how the cervical spine is made, why it functions the way it does, and what are the parts specifically that can cause pain. Well, uh, thank you. Boy, you look tall. Uh, so today we're going to talk about cervical spine. And uh, you, know, you can see this is a spine, and we did not take this from an actual patient, so don't worry. Uh, the spine actually, cervical spine is actually, uh, uh, when we say cervical, we refer to your neck, and that's what we're talking about. So this is pertaining to a lot about neck pain, arm pain, etc. Um, cervical spine, there's actually seven uh, segments. There's, uh, uh, we call vertebral body. Uh, and uh, the segments kind of stack up together. On top of here, obviously, is the head. Uh, you know, and uh, that head actually, there's a rotation going left and right or up and down, and this is actually occur a lot in this joint, but it also actually occur in, to some extent uh, around the, uh, the joint throughout the whole cervical spine. They all contribute to some extent, but particularly uh, at C5-6, which is uh, around uh, this level. All right, uh, and that's important because a lot of times when we see pathology, C5-6 is actually very frequent. It's almost 95% you don't see any uh, involvement in C5-6, so even if you just see degeneration uh, changes in the MRI. Um, so we're gonna talk about a little bit based on the, the symptom and possible pain generator in the uh, uh, cervical spine. Um, you, first, uh, you can see we're gonna talk about uh, this area, just a little bit of different parts of uh, each uh, uh, parts on the on the vertebral body. This is a spinal process. This is what you feel on the back of your uh, uh, neck, the pointy uh, uh, structure. Uh, between the joints, uh, between this, uh, the stacking of uh, the different level, right here on each side, uh, this is what we call facet joints or the joints of uh, uh, the cervical spine, the, the neck spine. Uh, between the joints, uh, and what you're going to see, if this is the front of the spine, uh, and you can see this, the disc actually is there between each bones. Okay, so when we talk about this, we talk about, we name the disc by the level above and below. So if it's uh, uh, the disc between level f uh, 5 and 6, this is a C5-6 disc. Uh, and you have a vertebral body, a vertebral artery that's coming down, uh, which is uh, uh, very important to know because as far as when we do injection, you really don't want to put any uh, medication in there. It supplies the brain, doesn't it? Oh yeah, and uh, you got more than what you asked for. Uh, and when you come out here, this is actually the uh, the nerve. So you can see that between the uh, the vertebral body, where there's actually opening, and this nerve actually uh, is coming up on the spinal canal, which we don't necessarily see clear here, but this is in here. So each of this nerve is actually coming from the spinal cord and they kind of form a plexus or a network of nerve and that uh, subsequently does go down to your arm and, uh, and allow you to move and have the sensation in your uh, uh, arm. So when I'm feeling something, all that information is passing right through these nerves, is that so? Yes. And even movement, everything, everything is going right through here. Yes, the muscle building, you know, and uh, to be able to generate force Everything just goes through there, and actually it goes up and comes down. It seems like a pretty elegant design, something that not only houses the nerve supply to the rest of your body, mm -hmm. but provides structure and movement and architecture so that you can move your head. Right. It seems divine. It is divine. Uh, and uh, there's, so we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, different structure uh, of the pain. Uh, that could be coming from the spine. Obviously, um, with just sort of uh, what we don't see here. All right. Uh, what you see, don't see here is actually muscle, and the the muscle and the other thing we don't see here is the shoulder, which is actually right here. And I think the way I think, and uh, you can share with me uh, and teach me, uh, that uh, I see shoulder and neck actually as a one functional unit. And the reason I say that because what you don't see here, there's actually a lot of muscle that's attaching to uh, the spinal process to the cervical spine and actually attached to the shoulder blade, uh, such as trapezius. So a lot of times when people have, uh, come and say have muscle spasm, muscle tightness, and you know, you kind of pop in and they say, you ask them more, I did have history of 
shoulder problem. Mm -hmm. And you know, they actually, the shoulder and the neck, they fit into each other. So a lot of times you actually see uh, pathology in both. Uh, so you got trapezius actually coming down, attaching to the shoulder. You actually have rhomboid muscle here. This is actually, you know, if you, you visualize this is your shoulder blade, you actually have rhomboid muscle and uh, I overlaying by the trapezius muscle uh, to the shoulder blade and which in turn, you know, have a rotator cuff which uh, attach from your shoulder blade to your uh, arm, to your upper arm. Uh, so a lot of times you can have muscle tenderness or muscle tightness by itself or because of other etiology. Um, other etiology including, and then those uh, etiolo other etiolo etiology could be um, arthritis, to say joint arthritis. Sure. Uh, a big part, and I think this is, uh, and again, this is uh, what we talk about, holy grail of uh, pain medicine, is actually if you have discogenic issue or disc problem, disc degeneration, uh, they can refer to various uh, areas. I mean, Paul, can you elaborate that a little sure. bit? Sure. Well, one of the things that's, that's interesting is that each one of these nerves um, uh, correspond to a particular something called dermatome. Is that right? Yeah. And also myotome. So different uh, muscles in, in the body, say the bicep or the tricep, are always innervated by specific uh, nerves that come out of the spine. Yeah. So when we do our exam, we're looking for weakness, for example, or loss of reflex or diminished sensation that would correspond to a specific nerve root. Right. Um, I find it always interesting that the entire thing is connected and what happens here affects what happens here. Oh yeah. And sometimes even what happens here affects what happens here. Right, and uh, it's it's not and you know it's not very straightforward if you really think about it. Just because the the um, the nature of the design itself, the nature of uh, the the whole thing is uh, being put together, uh, and that actually uh, you know it's actually go back to the reason why I think uh, to once you go see someone for neck pain or arm pain, you want to go to someone who actually be able to have uh, a detailed understanding of anatomy, and that's extremely important because. Uh, uh, for instance, you can have, uh, and this has happened numerous times, uh, you know, you see the MRI, uh, you see a disc herniation, you see a pinch nerve, it comes, for instance, for left arm pain. And, you know, you see multiple doctors, you come here and, and basically everybody's saying, well, this is a pinch nerve, uh, uh, this is a, uh, a cerebral back up. But then you have epidural injection, nothing helps. You do the facetial nerve blood, doesn't help. And uh, finally, you kind of palpate, come here and we got to do a detailed examination, there's actually a trigger point. That, that reminds me, all these big pieces of bone, this is not smooth, is it? Oh, no. Why are these, all these little points of bone out here? What's, what's attaching there? Well, this is, uh, and this is muscle. Muscle, ligament. What you don't see is that you have, even between these bones here, you actually have ligament that's holding them together. Uh, and so you have muscle, and the muscle and the ligament tension actually will change the shape of your neck. So a lot of times we see uh, lordosis reversal, uh, basically indication of uh, uh, muscle spasm. So when I say, oh, you have a muscle spasm, uh, just look, look at uh, MRI, I say, how the heck do you know that? Yeah. Well, I say, well, hey, you know, this is why I uh, was trained for. But no, but the secret is actually is more because we see this, uh, the straightening of your of the spine on either MRI, CAT scan, or even just an x-ray, and that's when we know there's a muscle spasm and actually tell us there's either some issue with the muscle, but usually there's a much deeper uh, reason for that. So what, what I hear you saying is that there's a lot of interconnectedness. Mm -hmm. There's muscles laced together with tendons, ligaments, transversed with nerves, right. housed by bone, with vertebral arteries passing through. Right. So this is a pretty complex structure, and what it says to me also is that it's not always apparent immediately right. upon the first visit or even second visit sometimes, it takes a deeper analysis sometimes to get down to the root of the problem. Right, just like an uh, onion. You chop it, you peel it, mm -hmm. until you get to a core. So it's a, it's a challenging thing, and it's kind of like playing chess, uh, in my mind, which is sometimes <laughs> a, a real challenge, depending on who your opponent yeah. is. Um, well, what's also interesting to me is when you turn around, having a relationship, let's say we were to take an x-ray with the mouth open, what part would you see? I mean, where is the head exactly? Well, the head will be right here, and this is, uh, you know, what you don't see is uh, uh, the odontoid, which is actually sticking out. Uh -huh. So, once you actually take an x-ray, and this is an open mouth view, sure. uh, once you take a look at x-ray, and it's important because you could actually see the top parts or the junction of your, uh, uh, between your head and your neck. 
Uh, and that's actually very important because uh, you know if your head is wobbly, yes. uh, you have to know that, and you have to know if actually it's a dangerous thing to have a wobble, wobbly head. So what are what are the things that can can hurt? I mean, we talked earlier on some of our mm -hmm. other videos. There are a lot of things that when uh, they age they don't necessarily hurt. Some things when they age they do. Right. And what are the the potential sources of pain in the neck? When someone says I've got neck pain right. or head pain. What are the things that can really can really hurt? All right. So uh, we we'll just go from inside out. Obviously, the disc, any one of this disc, but particularly lower portion. Uh, that's typically from uh, you know just based on research. Uh, those lower section is uh, typically that this uh, can be uh, a problem because of degeneration or overuse. You then those this uh, degeneration can result in herniation or tear. Even just a tear, you can have inflammatory. Uh, changes causing inflammation in the nerve and they can cause pain going down to your arm uh, either one side or both sides uh, and if you come a little bit further uh, you know and uh, you can have arthritis here and typically they can actually outgrow outside as well as inward where you actually have spinal canal and that actually is uh, the main reason people have spinal stenosis in the cervical spine which can result in difficulty walking or balance issue why because right in here is a spinal cord, and this is a little bit different from the lower back, where you know the spinal cord is not necessarily there. But here, everything that's below the level that's being pinched is going to be affected. So everything down that level is going to your brain will be affected. Uh, you gotta have a steady hand. Oh uh, yeah, that's why uh, doing injection under fluoroscopy and actually knowing anatomy is extremely important when we do uh, a procedure around the neck. You gotta have a lot of training to do this safely. Is that true? Oh yeah, I definitely would. Uh, you know, research a little bit before we uh, let anybody stick a needle in my neck. <laughs> it, uh, Such as you. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it reminds me that uh, Dr. Wu is a triple board certified. There are not many doctors out there who can say that. Well, He's had a lot of training, and uh, not many people I'd want sticking a needle in my neck. But certainly, Dr. Wu would be okay. So let's just talk a little bit about um, the different kinds of epidurals. Okay. Um, one of the things that I like to do is if I have a, a herniation, mm -hmm. one of the approaches is I may use a catheter. Right. And uh, when you use a catheter, what, what's your approach? How do you go about doing that? Well, you know, when we do procedure, we always want to make sure it's safe. That's the number one concern. Uh, you know, but you don't want to do more harm. So the approach that we have, uh, for instance, let's uh, take a scenario where a patient has left arm pain, as we talked before. Uh, you know, you try to get and the assumption is on the MRI there is actually discrimination on the left side. Sure. So you're actually coming from the right side. Uh, and yeah, the, the level I, choose, I I will go to, and I think this is a group by most uh, people who does this, is you use a, a C7 or T1 area where uh, the space, uh, be, you know, epidural space is uh, the open. open. Yeah. It's, it's larger uh, in that area compared to upper level. Sure. And you take a needle, uh, which is usually an epidural needle, and once you get into epidural uh, in space by the routine uh, technique, loss of resistance, sure. you confirm contrast. You thread then uh, thread the, the catheter uh, gently and tr uh, trying to you know go to whichever level you're trying to reach. Now this has got to be a very very delicate catheter. How how small is this thing? Uh, this is actually you know there's most I use a 22 gauge uh, needle, That's which is actually a. Uh, it's not as thin as hair, but it's, it's actually uh, not that much thicker. Well, actually, it's a little bit thicker, but uh, uh, compared to this pain, this will be a part of a 14 gauge, uh, 12 gauge needle. A 22 gauge, the higher number of gauge number is a smaller needle. You probably talk about maybe the tip of the, the pen here. So thin as in? Very thin. And right. it's very flimsy, actually. Uh, and, uh, so if it were to hit some sensitive structure, what would happen? Actually, most likely nothing will happen. The reason being because the tip is actually spring. Oh, and so okay. if you think about a very soft spring, if you actually <coughs> hit the resistance, the spring actually will bend and actually will deflect. It will not puncture. Oh, that's great. Right. Well, I think this has been a great overview of cervical anatomy. Is there anything else that we should add, do you think? Oh, well, I think you, know, you can always think of something to add. But uh, I think, uh, you know, to keep it simple, I think this is, uh, hopefully this will be helpful. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.